Howdy y'all. Today we're talking tankless. But before we do that, make sure and hit that subscribe button. Let me know if you like this video with a thumbs up and give me a comment on what you'd like to see in the future. Now, let's talk tankless. Today, we're gonna to be talking about the different types of tankless. Now, we had a previous video where we just talked about all different types of water heater, and tankless was one of those. We talked about tanks, we talked about electric and gas, we talked about heat pumps, we talked about power vents, direct vents, and we even mentioned tankless. But today, we're gonna to be talking strictly about tankless, and we're gonna be discussing the different types of tankless. We're not gonna go into a huge amount of depth on them, but we're gonna talk about the individual types of tankless, from electric to gas, what the advantages and disadvantages of them are, which ones are more efficient, whether it's indoors or out. So let's talk about that now. One critical thing that's different about a tankless and a tank is, tankless gas water heaters do require electricity. This electricity runs the controls on it, it ignites it, it keeps it running, and it also helps with the efficiency. But if the power goes out, you don't have any hot water unless you've got a backup generator or some way to run the tankless and plug it in. You can do that. You can unplug it, plug it into an extension cord and plug it into a generator. But you do have to have electrical power, just a regular 120 volt outlet to run a tankless water heater. First of all, the majority of houses that they're building nowadays with tankless, at least in the North Texas area, are outdoor tanklesses. Now, I'm kind of on the fence about this. The North Texas area still gets really, really cold. I mean, there's times we go into the single digits. Outdoor tankless, that's kind of tough to keep them from freezing. And if the power goes out, you're in a real big trouble. Another thing about outdoor tankless is most of them are not as high efficiency as some of the indoor tankless. Because as an outdoor tankless, it has to be what we call a non-condensing unit. This means it doesn't have a condensate drain. It doesn't have a vent or anything. The vent goes right outside through the cabinet that's in the wall. And you'll see in the pictures that we're showing that it's a pretty simple unit, but it is outdoors. It is susceptible to freezing. One thing about it, if you do have an outdoor tankless, make sure and always leave your water trickling inside on the hot side in the event that you ever have extreme cold temperatures. And that means staying below freezing more than 24 hours, okay? Now they are designed to protect themselves. All tankless are designed to protect themselves electrically by heating up on the inside. They'll even sometimes kick the burner on a little bit to keep it warm. But if the power goes out, that doesn't work. You have nothing to keep it protected. In fact, in 2021, when we had the worst freeze ever, or at least the worst freeze in a long time, we didn't have one single tankless that froze that didn't lose power. Almost every one of them that lost power froze and burst. So, that's one of the things you need to make sure and watch when you have an outdoor tankless. But outdoor tankless are great. Again, they have the same qualities of all tankless. Endless hot water. And they are higher efficiency than a standard tank. But they are non-condensing, so they don't have as much efficiency as the indoor fully condensing tankless. Now, the new X3 that we install can be indoor or outdoor. With just a few modifications, it works both ways. As I said before, it is the ultimate tankless. So let's talk indoor tankless, shall we? Indoor tankless means it's installed in the garage, it's installed in the attic, could be installed in a closet, in the middle of the house, the garage closet, but it's installed indoors. I still recommend this. I'm not a big fan, as I mentioned before, of outdoor tankless because of the danger of them freezing. So if you can install it inside in your garage or anything else, understand too, all of these tankless units, whether indoor or outdoor, some are a little larger than those, but they're about the size of a carry-on suitcase. Some of them your larger ones, some of them your smaller ones. That means if you had a water heater in a closet that was a tank type, you're gonna gain a part of a closet back. You can put this tankless in that closet and then you can store brooms, you can store a vacuum cleaner, you can store a lot of things because it hangs on the wall. So you gain a closet when you go to tankless. Another benefit of tankless, right? Not just that you don't run out of hot water, but you gain closet space back. Who doesn't want more closet space? So with the indoor units we mentioned a minute ago, condensing and non-condensing. As I said, the outdoor units are non-condensing. That means they're a little less efficient. They're about 85% efficient water heaters. Now, when we go to condensing units, two things happen. They become much higher efficiency and we can vent them in PVC pipe or a plastic type pipe because the vents don't get as hot. We don't have to worry about combustibles, touching wood or anything like that. 
that we do when we have a non-condensing unit because the gases off a non-condensing unit get very hot. Now I'll talk more about that when I get in depth on gas tankless water heaters, but that's a big thing you have to think about. Now the downside to the condensing unit is it has a condensate drain because when we take all of the heat out of these high efficiency unit gases, we produce condensation. And the condensation, unfortunately, is acidic. It's not like condensation off of an air conditioning unit, which is just cold water sweat coming off like a glass in your room. This condensation is drawn out of the gases that are exiting the burner of the water heater. That means it has some mixtures of some chemicals in it that when mixed with water, they become acidic. So we have to put a neutralizer on them to protect that water if it's going anywhere that the acidic water could do damage, like in metal pipes, cast iron pipes, plants, if we happen to be draining it outside, if there's any grass or plants or anything around, it can kill those things or it can eat up the metal pipes. So we have to be careful with that, but we have things that we can do to prevent that. Now, most tankless water heaters, or at least the standard one we install, will produce 10 to 11 gallons per minute. The X3, all day long, 10 to 11 gallons per minute. You do have some smaller tankless that will produce anywhere from six to eight gallons per minute. Those aren't as common as they used to be when tankless first came out, but you still have some around like that. Personally to me, if you're gonna put a tankless in, the gas piping is not much different than on a smaller one than it is on a larger one. So why not go the largest tankless you can do in a residence? That would be 199,000 BTU indoor tankless or outdoor tankless. That's gonna give you in the 10 to 11 gallon per minute range under most conditions in our areas. You do have to take these things into consideration though about the venting and the condensation and all of that about where your tankless is gonna be located. Sometimes it's very easy to put it in the closet or in the area where the old tank was. Sometimes it's not. The other thing about tankless water heaters is usually you're only gonna see them in the middle to southern states. Tankless water heaters are strictly based on how much they can raise the incoming water temperature. And they have to do it instantly. Remember earlier I mentioned tankless water heaters give you endless hot water, not instant hot water. They do heat the water instantly as it passes through, but it still takes you a little bit to get the hot water to your faucet. If it took two minutes to get the hot water there when you had a tank, it's gonna take two minutes to get there when you have a tankless. The only difference is that tank's gonna run out. That tankless is not. There's a few habit changes you have to make too with tankless water heaters. Sometimes your faucet may need to be turned a little more hot than it used to be because with tankless water heaters, we run the temperature lower than we do with a standing tank. It runs closer to the maximum temperature you can withstand. Tanklesses generally run 120 to 125, whereas tank water heaters will usually run around 130 to 140. That way, you don't use as much cold water with your hot water. So if you're used to your single hander shower valve being set at about 11 o'clock, you may have to turn it a little more towards 10 o'clock to get the same shower that you want. Another thing with tankless, whether it's indoor or outdoor, you may not be able to run a bath and a shower at the same time, but you can fill that bathtub up and then jump right in the shower and take two, three, four showers in a row. You're never gonna run out of hot water. You can take showers all day long if you want to. Most tankless water heaters that are 10 gallons a minute, you can be taking two to three showers at one time. So it's not like because you have a tankless, you're not gonna be able to use multiple fixtures. The bathtub and the washing machine are the only thing that really ever affect the flow on a tankless and that's the only time you generally don't want to be showering is if you're using those kind of fixtures. So we've got the indoor tankless, we've got the outdoor tankless. They're gonna give you endless hot water. You have to change a few habits if you buy one, but if you've got a lot of kids and you're the last one in the line and you're taking a cold shower, a tankless is a great investment. It takes about seven to 10 years for it to recoup its cost. They are a more of an investment to install. They can be very expensive, but they do last longer. You know, a regular tank top water heater you buy today is likely gonna cost you a couple of thousand dollars. But in 10 years, that same water heater may be 4,000 or $5,000, may even more. Especially since we're talking about in 2030 and 2031, they may not even allow them anymore. With the tankless, our X3 comes with a 15 year, 100% warranty. Well, you can't beat that. And these tanklesses are supposed to last 15 to 30 years. So that's pretty amazing. And that's gonna save you a lot of money. Even though you pay a little more money up front, you're gonna save it in the long run. Plus you've got that high efficiency saving you on your gas bill. One last tankless, the electric tankless. Now, 
As we talked earlier, some neighborhoods don't have gas. Well, you can't put a gas tankless in on a house that doesn't have gas. So they do have electric tanklesses. And in certain applications, electric tankless work great, but they're very specific as to their application. The big problem with electric tankless is their flow rate. About the maximum you can get out of an electric tankless, realistically, is about four and a half gallons a minute. Now, our shower heads are two and a half gallons a minute. Well, you can probably take one to two showers at a time at the most. The problem is a bathtub fills up at about four to eight gallons a minute. It's gonna take a long time to fill that bathtub with an electric tankless. So if you're a person that likes bathing all the time, an electric tankless is generally not a good option because you have to wait too long to fill up the bathtub. Now, a lake house, a smaller house, if you know you're always gonna shower, electric tankless can work great. They are still endless hot water. Now they're not quite as efficient as the gas tankless but they are more efficient than an electric tank. They will give you the endless hot water. The only downside is they will not give you a large volume of hot water at one time. So, you know, one to two showers at a time. Now, one big thing is this. We're talking all these tankless installs and everything else, but in general, most houses do not have enough gas or enough electricity to run tankless water heaters. So. That means you're gonna to have to upgrade the gas system or upgrade the electrical system to get that supply to that tankless. This can be a minimal expense or it can be a larger expense, just depending on what you have. There are some houses out there that do have enough gas, but when a plumber comes in and builds your home, he builds it for a 40,000 BTU tank type water heater or an electric water heater that's 5,000 kW. He didn't size the gas when he built it for 199,000 BTU tankless, or he didn't size the electrical for a 28 kW electric tankless. So there is an investment with a tankless. The tankless itself costs more than a standard water heater, and you usually have to upgrade your gas or electrical system to install one. Other than that, you've got an outstanding product that lasts a lot of years, much longer than a tank. And even that, it won't flood your house like a tank will. It's not as heavy, it's not as large, it gives you more space for a closet, all kinds of great things with tankless, and you never run out of hot water. As you can see in all of these pictures again, these are state water heaters. Why do we use state water heaters? Because they're dependable. We have support with state. They take care of their customers, and we take care of our customers. At the end of the day, that's a huge thing. We give a 15 year warranty on our X3 tankless. Our X3 is the newest model of tankless out, the newest design. It's a 100% state tankless, and it's the first one that's been made in the United States. Most all other tankless made in Japan or they're made in Korea, they're not made in the United States. If you take the cover off of a tankless water heater, in general, they have Japanese writing on a lot of the parts. You won't see that on the State X3. The X3 is the first tankless designed and built in the USA. As you know, I've spoken before about me being the responsible master plumber for Milestone Home Services. And at Milestone, we do install the state water heaters. We use the X3 and we install water heaters in the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex. When we install an X3 water heater, we give it a 15 year, 100% warranty. The wonderful thing also about the X3, it's a versatile unit. It's extremely high efficient, 95% is the rating they gave it, but they say it even goes to 98%. The installation of it can be indoors or outdoors with a few modifications. It is an extremely great unit. It has a pump built into it. You can use it as a dedicated loop system, which means when your house was built, you had a recirculation system put in it. You may have had an external pump on your old water heater. This one has the pump built into it, integrated into the brain of the X3. It also can be used as what we call a comfort pump, which is a retrofit recirculation system where you use crossover manifolds under the sink. They're not quite as good as a dedicated loop system, but it's a great way to get hot water much quicker in an existing home. There are so many advantages to having the X3 tankless. It's actually called the 199 X3 Adapt. I wanna remind you, this video is not sponsored by State Water Heaters or A.O. Smith. There are many good tankless water heaters out there. There's Noritz, there's Renai, there's Navian, there's Ream. 
All of these tankless water heaters are installed all over the place in the country. But because of the quality and dependability and support that state tankless water heaters give you, I prefer state tankless water heaters. Man, there's a lot to know about tankless and I just touched the tip of the iceberg. There is so much more in depth we're gonna go. We're gonna go more videos later on about installing tankless water heaters, troubleshooting tankless water heaters, sizing the gas for them, all of these different things. How to tell about them right away, whether or not you've got enough gas or not if the tankless installed correctly. In fact, the biggest problem with tankless water heaters is that probably 50% or more are not installed correctly. Therefore, we're gonna be teaching all about that. I hope you've liked this video. I hope it's been helpful. I hope to see your comments on what kind of tankless you install or what your thoughts are on a tankless. I know there's a lot of old school plumbers out there that still don't like tankless, but not me. I love tankless. So hit that subscribe button. Let me know what you'd like to see in the future and what your tankless looks like. And let me know if you like this video. I'll see you next time on Serving Up Plumbing with David Butler. Just tell your friends the butler did it.